Hey everyone, welcome to ONTAP. I'm Chris, and I'm not an expert, just a guy who enjoys good beer. Welcome to part two of our discussion on why there are so many different types of beer glasses in the world. So if you didn't check out part one, uh, link is down below and card is over here. But to quickly recap, um, certain glasses are designed to get certain characteristics out of beer. So for example, a more foamy head or a more aroma, that sort of a thing. Partly it's because glasses are designed with um, durability in mind. You know, people are going to be in a crowded pub or they're going to be up on their feet and jostling around in a crowded bar. So you want to design a glass that's you know, not going to break super easy and you can kind of hold on to it without any issue. Partly it's because of regional varieties, people in different parts of the world designing glasses based on their personal preferences, and partly it's just something fun to do. So in this video, we're going to talk more about why certain glasses are designed the way they are, specifically mugs and special glasses. First up, we have the dimpled mug. This is definitely a more common glass in places like the UK and Canada, as well as some other Commonwealth realms, but I would say it's a very rare piece of sort of common glassware in the US. Especially in Canada, when I've gone into bars and pubs, I've noticed a lot of dimple mugs abound. And I would say that in the UK, the dimpled mugs may be like the I don't know, third most common piece of glassware I tend to see after the Imperial Nonic and Imperial Tulip Pints, both discussed in part one. But again, that's just me from my sense of being around places like England and Canada. A characteristic, of course, of this mug are the little dimples on the side, which means that you can get a very good grip if you decide to pick up the glass, not by the handle, because I guess you're feeling contrarian. And it also means that it's very easy for you to measure out the beer and know exactly how much you're putting in the glass since the little dimples act as basically like mini measuring blocks or little mini measuring dimples, I suppose, is a more accurate way of putting it. The tankard. So the tankard is very much a piece of drinkware associated with the drinking culture of Britain and Ireland traditionally. The tankard is a mug, it's got a handle on the side, but it's generally made out of things like pewter or silver or just generally metal, though you can also get tankards made out of ceramic and wood, though these are much less common in the modern day, but they were much more common you know, a couple hundred years in the past. You also, going far enough back in, back in the past, had tankards made out of leather, which is sort of an interesting material, but you know, you gotta work with what you have if you're living in the 1600s, I guess. The rule for the tankard is it's basically a mug, but the default material for its you know, composition is not glass. Usually it's going to be metal um, or other things. And also tankards are generally going to be collector's items, so they're, they're specialty objects and you're not going to usually find them at bars and restaurants. Stein. The Stein, meaning stone in German, is named such because, at least in theory, this type of mug is made out of stone. But it doesn't have to be. You can have Steins made out of not just stone, but you know, things like wood, porcelain, metal. I mean, I've even heard crystal. I don't know how accurate that is, if that still classifies as a Stein. But essentially, anything you can make a drinkware out of that could maybe be classified as a Stein. But if anyone knows, actually, with more specifics, please let me know in the comments. My sense is a true Stein should be made out of stone. but you know, that rule has kind of gone a little lax in, in more recent decades. A characteristic of the Stein is the fact that it usually is extraordinarily detailed. It's basically like a little miniature piece of artwork that you drink beer out of. And as such, you don't tend to find Steins being given out willy-nilly to patrons at bars and restaurants. Rather, they're more like collector's items. And you also tend to see Steins with little miniature kind of metal tops on them, often made out of things like tin or pewter, that you operate using your thumb and a little lever on the side. Maskluck. The Maskluck, or Moss glass, is a German type of mug that is designed to hold a lot of beer. So a Moss is a German measurement that essentially is one liter. And also, if you look at this little B-shaped thing at the end of the word, that's something called an Szet or a Schaff's S, which refers to two S's together. So the, the B is the same thing as two S's. Anyway, if you couldn't guess, this Maskluck holds one liter of beer. Yeah, it's basically just a giant mug that's designed to, well, get you, you know, rather, uh, rather drunk when you're at an Oktoberfest or any other sort of German-themed event. And very much we tend to think of Maskluck's as being associated with Oktoberfest and Bavaria and just sort of very typically German sort of uh, beer-related activities. 
The muscle cloak is basically just a giant glass that has dimples on the side and is usually, it's also purely cylindrical. There are also certain breweries or, or kind of beer gardens in both Germany and, and sort of German inspired beer gardens in other parts of the world that often will stamp the brewery logo on the front of their own Maskluks. Teku stemmed glass. This is the kind of glass that if your beer is served to you in it, you know it's going to be pretty good. Or at least it's going to be very hoppy or sour or sweet or some other kind of flavor that's not generic beer flavor. It was invented in 2006 by a couple of Italian brewers, and yes, it's very much designed to look like a wine glass. The long, thin stem allows you to hold the glass without your hand heating up the beer, and the main bowl supposedly brings out some aromas and kind of highlights flavors. It's often used for things like lambics and sours, but I've also seen tons of really high-strength IPAs often served in Teku glasses. Flute. The flute is basically just a champagne glass, so as such, it's designed to highlight fizziness and carbonation of any beverage that's poured into it. As such, you're generally going to see flutes used very sparingly with kind of sweet, fizzy fruit beers. There are also some specialty glasses that have been invented within the last 10 years, notably by a glass manufacturer called Spieglau. These include Stout Glass. This was invented in 2014 in partnership with two American craft breweries. The glass design was basically picked after just lots of testing was done, and it was eventually figured out that such a glass works best with beer that has heavier kind of dark notes to it, things like chocolate and roast malt and toffee, and it also still allows a good head to form. IPA glass. This was developed in 2013 in collaboration with Sierra Nevada and Dogfish Head, two very large IPA heavy American craft breweries. The glass is notable for having a sort of mid-sized stem with ridges on it, as well as a bulbous top half. And both of these essentially aid in bringing out various aromas of the beer. The bulbous top half is sort of wide enough to capture really kind of hoppy notes, and then the bottom stem with the ridges aerates the beer, which also allows sort of those, those hoppy IPA-esque aromas to kind of really come out. The company also developed a few other glass types, which are basically variations on beer glasses from part one, and really quickly those are American Wheat Beer. This one's designed to highlight floral and fruit scented aromas and should be used, surprise surprise, with American and Belgian wheat beers. Barrel Aged Beer. This is a specialty glass that's essentially just a Belgian tulip glass and it's designed to be drunk with craft beers that have undergone some amount of aging in wooden barrels. Craft Pills. This glass was developed in conjunction with Trümmer, a German Pilsner manufacturer, and was only released in 2017. And the design is very much focused around the idea of highlighting very hoppy aromas. All right, so that's enough about Spiegelau. Let's get to the last two, which are, at least in my opinion, the real fun ones. The Yard of Ale. The Yard of Ale, or Yard Glass, is a very long, thin type of glassware that basically resembles an old-timey brass horn. It's got this bulb at the bottom, followed by a long, thin stem that gradually opens up in the fashion you might associate with some kind of a brass instrument. Allegedly, this type of glass originates from 17th century England, but my understanding is both back then, as is the case now, it was never really intended as anything more than a gimmick. It was certainly not viewed as a type of legitimate glassware to be used by the general population for obvious reasons. You know, the kind of thing you'd have as part of a drinking contest, or the kind of thing you'd order if you were in New Orleans or Las Vegas, and presumably also using it at a drinking contest. And yes, it's called the Yard of Ale because it is three feet long, or one yard. Glass beer boot, or otherwise known as the boot. Come on, you've seen this glass. I mean, I've even drunk out of one of these exactly once in my life. I think? Maybe I was in Boston? Anyway. This type of glass is a homage to back in the day when German soldiers, after winning a battle, and presumably short on glasses, would drink their beer out of boots, because they essentially didn't have anything else at hand. Or maybe they were being contrarian? I don't know about you, but uh, drinking my beer out of a boot seems to be not exactly the most hygienic or uh, sanitary way to consume one's uh, alcohol, but hey, I mean, I guess if you're a Prussian soldier in the 1700s, you're gonna pretty much do whatever you can to get drunk. It was a bit of a rough life. The Prussian service was considerably worse than the English. So anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed these two episodes, and I just want to make it clear, right, that there are other types of glasses humans may have drunk their beer out of, and certainly they have, you know, like water glasses and things like that, right, which I, I didn't really get into. And I'm sure there are, like, ultra, ultra specialty glasses out there that have been used, but I just wanted to focus on the primary types of glasses you're most likely going to see around the world, as well as some specialty varieties. So anyway, that's my assessment. I hope you found the episode interesting. Um, let me know in the comments what you think, and I will uh, see you next time.